Disclaimer, I'm still learning. This is just everything I know about adventurers and traction control systems. Maybe you might know more than me or have a fact that I've got wrong here. Feel free to comment below and correct me and share the wealth of information. All right, guys, so off the bat, I'm gonna show you some clips uh, we've taken in the adventurer with the traction control system kind of doing its thing either well or not well at all, depending on who's driving. Many of these clips actually don't contain me driving my car. Uh, it's other people, hence why I've got good film coverage on these things. But I think it'll show people kind of how the traction control system actually makes the Adventurer um, what it is, and without it, how different the car would perform. Here's where it gets fun. Right hand down. That? Turn that way. If you start turning right, you'll make it. Yeah, you have to rewalk it a bit. I try and aim a bit this way more, if you can, Will. Yeah, you, need, you want to try and drive that line. So you can see here, uh, when Will was driving my car, he had to find a good throttle position where he was able to drive power from the engine down the drive line to all the wheels, but also not enough power that would overcome the braking on the wheel that's up in the air. When he fin finally found that, that position, a very precise spot, he was able to drive the car with wheels on the ground, the, the wheels that had traction, past this point uh, so the vehicle would make it over the hump and you could see because he is not very used to my car when he came over he wanted to kind of human naturely power through it and that's what caused him to kind of bring up the revs too high and jar the car see someone who kind of is very used to how uh, the car performs i kind of know already when to come off the throttle and when to let the power back down it's something you kind of just pick up over time and you just learn it um, probably when you watch me do a lot of four-wheel drive tracks and this thing, you wouldn't even notice that, it, that the amount of throttle control that's happening to make the car look really stable um, and very slow going while trying to maintain traction. Now in this video, this is actually the same track as the last video, just a different camera angle. But I'm going to show you how, well, you've seen how extreme it kind of was on the camera looking at the track. Now I'm going to show you from a camera looking from behind where we send up a Jeep. Um, this has no front and rear lockers, but you'll see how much flex is involved and still no go. Now, yeah, I'm sure there's going to be people that are going, oh, you need to give it momentum, you need to give it speed. But the whole exercise is about trying to drive the track as slow, as slow and as controlled as possible and see if you can overcome the obstacle. That was the point of this day that I had out with people. So this is why the Jeep was trying to do it, um, basically by just walking it. And you can see even with all the front and rear flex, without the traction control or something to aid um, the open differentials on the front or the back, this vehicle was really struggling to overcome this very single hump up on the track. But for the purpose of kind of the exercise to show how much a little bit of momentum would help with a bit of a bump on the track, we got the Jeep driver to give it a little bit more power so you can see um, the result of that. Yeah, and you can see the gravity pull on that. <laughs>
it's that's purely because right, that's, 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 that's a vehicle with some crazy, a decent amount of flex, and he still can't get the traction. So. But that's, that is open disc right there. Yep. Alright, back he goes. 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 Back like an older model, um, like an older version of traction control system that in, that comes out in the V8s, that is actually quite different to the traction control system which we use in the V6. Now the adventurer made it up um, past the first little bump on the track and we effectively um, want to see that how much further he could go if we run him back with a little bit more momentum but you can see in two spots that it was just a lot harder to collect traction um, because the ABS system was just braking a lot slower in response to the wheel slip compared to what the V6s do. So you can see here with a little bit more momentum in the V8 Adventurous, you can get to, like you can kind of skip um, over the section with low traction and kind of just power through it. Uh, not really what we like doing off-road because we climb a lot of long hills along um, a lot of tracks that require a bit of navigation where you can't just send all the power and go straight. Um, one of the reasons why we choose an elect to use a V6, but you'll see here in a second, he's going to give it a bit to see if he can get over this hump anyway and see what happens. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's it up, that's it up, that's it up, back it up, back it up. Yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Now, let's talk about some modern four-wheel drives. Um, I was once an owner of a Toyota Fortuna, a 2020 model that comes equipped with a track. Uh, many four-wheel drives uh, from Toyota in the kind of Prado range, and I think the 300 series now contain this a track traction control system. It's very similar to the Adventurer's cross-track system, which all originates from, um, from what I believe was a Jeep uh, brake lock differential uh, traction control system. And it all founds, it all comes around the same basis of trying to brake the wheel that's slipping to transfer power to the wheel with traction. And in this video here, you'll see the Fortuna navigate this um, by applying a little bit of throttle and just kind of letting the traction control system do its part so you can overcome um, the, the slipping wheel when he hits the obstacle. So now let's watch this in replay uh, with the Fortuna traction control system, rear flex front independent versus the Jeep with front and rear live axle is flex, no traction control system. But now you're like, hey Chris, so why does this really, really matter when we can just drive things up super fast and bump your way over things? Well, have a look at this video. This is a good demonstration of why traction control really aids for driving. <laughs> And again, it's not me driving, but Wall pretty much drove it exactly the same way I would. And now you're probably like, yeah, but that isn't even really a four-wheel drive track, or it's not really a deep hole. Let me show you how different things look on video, and particularly when you show two angles. This is a clip of a video taken from behind. And this is a clip of a video taken in front. Me. Watch out. Mom's driving! Mom's driving! Watch out! No, that's not Mom. 
No. Sarah's driving. Good old traction control. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> Love it. Now, as usual, wasn't me driving. This was actually my wife in my car. And I was in there as a passenger, holding on for dear God. It is so different letting someone else drive your car and you being in the passenger seat. I reckon she would have driven it, though, if I told her to keep the foot down gently. Here's a video of actually Keith uh, from Territory Off-Road who wheeled my car not too long after... And it actually shows you a really, really good um, concept, well, a really good vision of someone else who drives an all-wheel drive but isn't used to how the traction control system works in the adventure. <laughs> you can see how he's trying to power out um, or tr try and power through the low traction situation and it's just not working for him until he just takes the gentle approach. Clearing need there. <coughs> Probably move over this way, guys. You want to come up this wheel? Yep, so a little bit that way. A little bit. Well, at least I don't completely embarrass <laughs> So all I'm trying to say guys is, it doesn't matter who you are, what you drive, you find a way to drive your vehicle the way you want it. Even my wife has found a passion for driving adventurers. It's the coldest hand, the run down this land, where the ocean lands. Slow. Yep, keep it going. It's the tallest sound. Right hand down, right hand down a bit more. Right hand down, yeah, a bit more. Yep, lighter on the brake. Yep, keep coming. Left hand down a little bit now. Left hand down. Keep coming. Yep, nicely done. On your way, Jasper. Is there a less tippy line than that? Sorry? Is there a less tippy line than that? Uh... And you wouldn't believe it, but that's the Jeep driver asking for a less tippy line. Except today he was in an adventurer that he bought, so I think he was uh, just testing the waters out. So all I'm trying to say really is, we're all out for the same thing. Enjoying what the high country has to offer out here. Enjoying what the four drive tracks um, bring us in challenges. And every day I'll drive over rivers, travel the mountains, look for a bit of adventure and confuse many four-wheel drivers. That's just us, all-terrain action. And yes, some days I still just send it. Well, thanks.
for watching guys if you've just found us please hit the subscribe button there's over 350 videos on our channel that feature this adventurer traveling around a lot of victoria and some of some other parts of australia um we're also on facebook you can just search for us all terrain action in google and you'll probably find all our socials um this is chris and i'm from all terrain action